Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, episode number 26. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this painting here, this impressionistic painting of a male. And then later on, I'll show you how I do a female on another episode. But without any further ado, let's get started. When I work with Topaz Studio 2, I like to start out in Photoshop. Now, you could start out right in Topaz Studio 2 if you like to, but my preferred way is Photoshop, so I'm going to show you that way. Now, what I've done was duplicated my background layer here, as you can see, and I called it Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox, because that's what I like to refer to it as. It helps me to become very creative, and today we're going to make a painting out of this really cool gentleman here with this really cool beard. So... Let's go ahead up to uh, Filter, and let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will get started. In the preparation for my tutorial today, I went ahead and created this image ahead of time, and I went ahead and saved it as a look. So if I come up here to add look under my looks here, under the look category here, you can open this drop down. You have all these different uh, groups in here, but under my looks here is where I saved mine at, and you'll notice I called it male portrait now if i click on this and click apply there it is there's my male portrait it is done and complete now as you'll notice i use the impression filter and the precision contrast filter i'm going to go ahead and delete this but at the end after i you know recreate this i'm going to show you how to save this out as a look so if you like this particular look on male portraits you may want to save it out and that would be a good starting point for you so that's a good tip but for now let's go ahead and delete this uh this look right here and we'll start from scratch we'll start out by coming up to add filter and coming down to the stylistic section and clicking on the impression painter filter the first thing i'm going to do is come all the way to the bottom of this filter and you can see there's a ton of different sliders and tools inside of here and there's different sections like color lighting and texture i want to be in this texture section down here at the bottom and I'm going to keep on dragging down. And you'll notice here, background type. You see these little flecks of white showing through there. That would be the canvas in the background showing through. And you'll notice the background color is white. And that's why the flecks look white. But I don't want any of that. So I'm going to just click on original. And you'll see those little white flecks go away. Sometimes you want those to show through. Depending what style of painting you want to do. But today I don't want this. So let me go back up to the top. But that was the first step, uh, just to change the uh, background type. I'm just going to follow along with my notes here. And I know that I use the uh, Type 2 paintbrush, but I've done a lot of experimenting going through the different brushes to get to that. So I highly recommend that you do experiment. Try all the different brushes. And then uh, as far as number of strokes, the next setting. And I usually just work from the top down on this workflow here. And then you have your choice of strokes, a number of strokes. You can have a low amount of strokes. And I think of it this way, more abstract with a low amount of strokes, medium amount of strokes, a little more detail, and a high amount of strokes, a lot of uh, detail. In my case, I start out with a low amount of strokes. And you can see when I do that, you see we lose a little bit of that detail here. It takes, more, takes on more of a painterly look, which is really what I'm going for here. And now let's play with the brush size. Okay, now we can take this brush size and we can move it to the right and get really crazy where it just doesn't look really good unless you're going for that really abstract look. But in my case, I just pull on these sliders and stop when I think it looks good. And I thought it was looking good right around, you know, 23 to 25, somewhere in there. And I'm going to say 23 looks good. Now the volume or the paint volume Let's let you see how the paint's going to show through on your image. Now, when I move this to the right, you see this? See how you can see more of these paint strokes in here? So that's the volume of the paint showing through there. So how thick, kind of how thick it looks, I would say. And I think somewhere around, I don't know, maybe a 30. Let's go for a 32. But just gives me a little bit of volume there. And the next thing is the opacity of the paint. The paint opacity, the large brush volume. I didn't play with that one. But again, play with all these different sliders. But let me just do the ones that I've done today. The opacity, let's move it to the right. As I do, you can see the paint really gets starts to thicken up. You see that? Which, which looks good. That's at, a, at the full way up at 100%. And I was right around, I believe, 70, somewhere around in there. I thought looked good for this particular painting today. 
And I like that. You see some nice brush strokes in here and everything is looking good. Now, here's one I don't use too much and that is the stroke color variation. But have you ever noticed, uh, if you've ever looked at Van Gogh's self-portrait paintings, he uses a lot of different colors in the face and things like that. And today I thought I would play around with that with the uh, color variation on a portrait. So I'm going to take this stroke color variation and start to pull it up. See how those colors start to pop in on the background? But look at his face. You know, it's taking a very nice painterly look, and I like that. And what did I use here? Right now I'm at 56, and I kind of like that. But I think I was back around, uh, where was I? 32, somewhere right around in there. 32, 34. Yeah, let's go 34. Let's get a little daring today. So color variation. And now the uh, stroke, you have stroke width and stroke length. So if I take this stroke width and move it to the right, you can see the strokes get wider, right? So depending how wide you want them, just adjust the slider accordingly. And I was thinking on mine, I was going to be right around, I think a 30 right there looked pretty good. And then I went with a length. So if we move this to the right, we'll lengthen those strokes. See that? We can really lengthen out those strokes. They get a little bit longer, or actually a lot longer in this case. And I think here I was around a 33, so I shortened them up a little bit. So I was right at 33, but play around with it and have some fun. This is all part of the joy of editing. And now next, uh, we have the spill. Now the spill here, it defaults here at zero. If I move it to the right, watch the paint strokes as I move this to the right. They start to spill out. You see that? And you may like that look, but in my case, I took it and moved. But look look on his beard here. You can see some really cool effects happening on the beard here. But I don't like what's happening in other places like in the hair right here. So what I did on this one is I took it and pulled it the whole way to the left. Because I thought, man, yeah, that's, that's the way I'm feeling it for this particular image. Now, this next adjustment is called smudge. Now, I don't use this one too much. But on this particular painting, I thought... Let's add some smudge just to blend things in. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see here. I'll take the smudge and start to move it to the right. See how things start to get smeary? And it looks kind of nice, and I like that. But I don't want to want that real smudge effect. Now, you may be going for that artistic look, and you may want that. But I want more of a painterly look. So what I did with the smudge was I just used it, and I'll take it the whole way off just to show you, just to smooth things out just a little bit. And what was my final result here around a 25 I think I went to like a 25 according to my notes here I thought that looked good I might just back it up a little bit now I'm zoomed in pretty close here so it looks a little smudgy so let me back out yeah when I back out I like it okay when I'm back when I'm zoomed up in it looks a little too smudgy but when I back out I like it because don't forget, I'm going to add a little bit of precision detail, and that's going to make my strokes pop out a little bit more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The last thing I want to do with the impression filter is add a little bit of canvas texture. So we're going to go in the texture section here, and I believe I use canvas one, so let me click on that. You don't see anything yet, so let me zoom in here, and you still don't see anything. But, oh, by the way, if you just click, left click on your uh, canvas with your mouse, you can see the before and there's the after. A little tip. And uh, so let's go ahead and take the texture strength and I'm going to start to move it to the right. And when I do notice another slider will magically appear. So see that magically appear? So we can adjust the texture strength as much as we want. And you don't want to go too crazy here. But let me see what I use. I use around a 45 on that. And then the texture size, you can make that texture larger or smaller, depending on what you want. And I was around a 29. So let me do it. This is negative to the left. This is positive to the right. So I was like at a positive 0.29 right there. And I like it. Let's zoom back out. And that was it with the impression filter. And we are almost done. I want to add another filter. So we'll come up to add filter. And that would be the precision contrast filter. I always like the precision contrast filter and the precision detail filter. I like to use those along with the impression filter because I think it really 
helps to uh, just add a little bit of sparkle and life to your image and also bring out some detail on the paint strokes and things like that. So they go really hand in hand. Today, I'm only going to use the Precision Contrast. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here so you can really see the effect. I'm going to start out with micro. These are really small areas of contrast. And you see that detail really starts to pop out in the small areas of contrast. And on this one, I went with around a 36 right there. And then the low, the lower areas of contrast, you can see that. I'll pull it up so you can see the effect. You can even pull it to the left and take take a uh, low contrast out. So you not only can you add, you can subtract, which is nice. But I went around a 20 on this one and the medium, I went to about a 26. I'll pull it up so you can see. And I'll pull it to the left so you can see the effects. So you can see the effects in both directions. But I ended up with like a 26 and then the high, let's move the high to the right. Let's move it to the left. You can see what's happening there. And here I went with about a 43. I was pretty high on the, uh, pretty high on the high. 43 right there. Now I'm going to left click the canvas with my mouse. Here's the before and here's the after. And then if I come up to the eyeball on the precision contrast, we can see the before and after effect on the precision contrast. Okay, very good. And then the last thing I did was add a little bit of color contrast. I love this slider. If you recall, remember when I added that extra uh, color variation to bring out some color in the face and the different parts of the image? I can emphasize that and bring that out more with this color contrast slider. I'm going to start to move that color contrast slider to the right. And notice when I do, see how those colors really start to pop out. And I want that, but that's too much, but I'm going to back it off. And I think I was right around the 22, 24. There's 22 right there. So let's click this eye right here in the precision contrast before and after. And that was basically it. So we went from this image right here of this really cool guy with a beard. And we end up with this image here. And I think it turns out to be a nice painting in the Van Gogh type style of uh, impressionistic painting. If you're happy with the results, you may want to save this out as a look. So to do that, just come up here to File, and you'll notice you have Save Look here. So click on Save Look, and just give it a name. You can give it a description and click OK. And when you do that, it'll live in your looks here. Now, when we're all said and done, all we have to do is click Accept, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop, and here's the before. I'll click the eye, and here's the after. And remember, you have an opacity slider here, so if you want to add a little bit of the photograph back into the image, you can blend by taking the opacity and dragging this to the left. See that? You know, and you can take some of that painterly effect away if you like. But I like mine up full, so I'm going to leave it up full. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Please leave me comments and questions. I'd really love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this one today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. This way you'll be notified every time I uh, upload a new tutorial. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me again this day on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!